Hey, welcome to Life in the Leadership Lane. I'm your host, Bruce Waller, where I get to talk to leaders that are making a difference in the workplace and in our communities. What did they do to get started and what are they doing to stay there? And today, oh my goodness, you're in for a treat. We have another special guest. Her name is Melody Lennox. Melody is the Senior Vice President of People Operations at Access, and I am so excited to have you on the show. Hey, Melody. Hey, Bruce. Thanks for having me. Super excited to be here. It's so good to see you. I feel I, before we got on, I said I feel it's it feels like it's been like 20 years since I've seen you just because of uh, the <laughs> pandemic and all the things we've been going through. But we, you know, we met. I always like to share when we kick off the show. We met years ago at Dallas HR and have yes. come, come to know each other in in the, the business community. So I'm so excited to have you on the show. I'm super excited. It has, it's been a month of Sundays and a year of Saturdays, but I'm super excited to be here. I love that. <laughs> Listen, folks, if you're listening right now, you need to get out a pen and paper because you're going to get a lot out of this. Hey, I want to kick off the show. I always like to start with your company, but I was looking on LinkedIn and uh, checking out your profile. And one of the things that I wanted to do when I started the podcast is I wanted to meet and connect with people that are really making a difference, right? Leaders and, and try to get some ideas to share that with others. And I was noticing on your profile and this really energized me. And it said, I believe in the power of ideas. And it has your name as a quote. Share, like, where did that come from? You know, we talk about in our company about may the best idea win. And I'm always um, interested in hearing people's ideas. Um, that's where you learn, right? That's where you learn about people. You learn about opportunities. And, you know, bringing that to the front is really important because that's how we grow. And so I just want to, you know, help inspire those ideas, do what I can to facilitate, um, to, to help connect people, to, um, you know, to make sure that that they materialize on those ideas. And so that's why the possibility, um, believing in the possibility of ideas, it's, um, it's something that's near and dear to my heart because it's about dreaming. Mm, dreaming. Oh my gosh. I heard a guy say this on the podcast this morning. I can't remember exactly which one. And he was talking about dreamers. And he said, I've come to realize after reading hundreds of thousands of bi biographies that there really aren't great people there are people that have chased great ideas and, and, wow. and big dreams. Yeah. And I just thought, wow, that's it. They that's have it. pursued their dream. Oh my goodness. I, I love, love that. it. Yes. He said they have a dream and they pursued it with a vengeance. And I just, man, I just love that. Hey, well, share a little bit for people who don't know uh, who access is share a little bit about the organization. Like, how do you serve your customers? Absolutely. So, Access is um, the leading healthcare technology company. Um, just to kind of put it in simple terms, uh, we provide solutions so that organizations can run their business end to end um, to help care at home. So when you talk about care at home for caregivers, care at home for um, any type of home care, home health hospice, um, you know, all private duty, private care, um, palliative care, you know, that's what we do. And so we believe that future, the future of healthcare is in the home. It's, we know that it's the most uh, cost effective. We also know that people prefer to, um, to heal in their own personal environments and surroundings. And so that's what we are, uh, you know, that, that's what we aim to do every day. And so our clients would be, the, you know, the end users providing the care. And so it allows them to do that no matter where they are, no matter who the patient is, they can go to those patients and provide phenomenal care, document it and communicate um, across the continuum. Man, what a fulfilling uh, role you have in, in this industry. I was just thinking about as you were sharing, my niece works for home health care in, uh, in Oklahoma. And my father-in-law, who, who recently passed, she, uh, her organization kind of took care of him his last couple of years. 
And I got to see what that looked like. And then hospice come in and just really just cared for him. And we were also like grateful that he got like a uh, great um, value uh, in his final years. Right. I mean, he just got yeah. a quality of life that he wouldn't have got if it wasn't for that home health care group. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what it does, it also helps the family, you know, to know what's going on, because then you can, you know, you have access to the information, whether you're physically there, or if you're remote, you know, we're all um, as, at some point, everyone becomes a caregiver, whether um, that's that, you know, we're the sandwich generation. Um, so we, you know, we want to make sure that everyone that's part of that caregiving circle knows exactly what's going on. They know how to communicate and what questions to ask and they have access to the information because the family is going through that process as well as the patient, right? And so that's been something that, uh, you know, our technology, we leverage technology to really aid and assist and you know, making sure that that's a smooth transition, right? End of life is in, in the quality of life that they have up until their final moments is important. So when when the when the caregivers, when the family can focus on really being there for the patient and not worry about the documentation, not worry about you know, oh, we need to find this information, find this record. It allows them to really provide better quality care overall. That's great. Oh, man, that is absolutely fantastic. I love that. And I appreciate you sharing that. Because uh, there's probably a lot of people that have heard of your organization, but didn't actually know uh, what 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 uh, how you serve your customers. Hey, uh, listen, we've we've known each other. And I know there's probably a lot of things that I don't know. But I would love to hear the Melody Linux story. Like, like, where did you grow up? And how in the world did you get into uh, HR and leadership? Absolutely. So I grew up um, where it all started, Hot Springs, Arkansas. So, you know, for those that may not know, Hot Springs, Arkansas, it's a tourist, it's a big tourist town. Um, it's the, uh, it's actually the first reserve, right? National Reserve. Um, it's a national park that, uh, that's bordered and protected. So Hot, the city um, actually borders and surrounds the national park. So you have um, your natural springs. So the bathhouses, hot springs is what it comes from. It sits on top of a dormant volcano. But, you know, people say there is healing um, properties in the water. Uh, so people from all over the world come for, uh, you know, for that. And so I, that's where I grew up. And, you know, how did I get into HR? Well, my mother. <laughs> my, my, my mother. Blame it on your mother. <laughs> blame it on my mother. Um, back when, you know, when HR was personnel, right? It's, you know, she was, she's been in the HR world for years. She leads, uh, she leads HR for the city of Hot Springs, actually. And so that's something that I've been around all my life. And just, I took a liking to that. And I loved how she was able to help people. And so I've always wanted to, you know, kind of bridge that gap to see how I can help people. And from an HR perspective, that's, that's what I learned. And from a leadership perspective, how did I get into leadership? You know, it started at a young age. I am the youngest of four. Okay. So I have three, three brothers. I'm the only girl. So I've been leading all my life, telling them <laughs> what to do, how to do it. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, so that's, so that's leadership and, you know, that's, that's uh, adversity because I was, the only, you know, being the only girl. So I, I learned to lead a bunch of guys. And so I, I don't get intimidated, you know, being the only woman in the room. I don't get intimidated. I was able to develop thick skin, you know, being raised with boys. And, um, and that really has helped me as I've grown in my career um, mm -hmm. to really be able to, you know, meet the needs of people. And I believe that uh, you don't need a title to lead. It's about influencing people. If you can influence people without a title, that's a great leader. And that's how I evolved. So regardless, I was the youngest, but able to influence my brothers to do the things I needed them to do and their friends prepared me for my leadership journey. <laughs> I love that. Uh, John Maxwell always talks about, you know, leadership, it's influence. It's nothing more and it's nothing less. And so absolutely, I love what you said. You brought up your mom, though. I, I love that. And, and you talked about her helping spirit. 
Like she, like she showed you what that looked like. I, I, I always like to ask my guests on the show, you know, you, you're sitting here as an, you're, you know, you're head of HR, you're, you're an HR leader. And, uh, but you didn't start there. Like it, right. it, it happened over time. I, I'm curious if there were some other people that have, you know, I always like to say mentors or, or people mm -hmm. that helped you get to where you are today. I, any, any mentors that you would recognize and, and what was it that made him a good mentor? Absolutely. One would be, I had a fifth grade teacher. Um, her name was Miss Watson. I'll never forget her. She believed in, um, in really encouraging me to be an individual. And, um, and that was something that, you know, she empowered you to speak in front of the class, to speak in assembly, things like that. And she encouraged me to do that. Um, and that's something that I, you know, I'll never forget from that perspective. We had an assistant principal in high school. Her name was um, Joyce uh, Littleton Crab. And she was so very poised, very um, respectful, no matter who you were, no matter what level you were. But her standards never changed. She held everyone to the same standard. And she encouraged you. If you weren't there, she encouraged you on getting there. And if you were there, she encouraged you to continue to go and how to give back. And so I, so I got to see her in action every day. So these are just a few of the, um, the leaders, you know, that I was interacting with growing up. And then as that, you know, as I've evolved, you know, I've had so many mentors that have given, you know, they've just poured into me. Um, one, when I moved to, when I moved to Dallas, um, I had a mentor, her name was Anna Hannah, and she was, um, she has an HR background as well. And Anna Hannah, she has this um, infectious laugh and she could just put anyone at ease, but she had a way of drilling down to the issue. It, no matter who it was, helping them get to the issue and then coming up with solutions. You know, in, in HR, it went from being that kind of that black and white world to really the gray, how to navigate the gray. And yeah. she was instrumental in helping me navigate that, um, you know, the gray um, and understanding how HR is truly a business partner, how to really understand the business and partner with, you know, the, the, the rest of the organization to understand what their challenges were and then how to bring the solutions to them, not wait for them to come to us for solutions. So those are just some of the mentors I've had. Isn't it amazing when you look back and you think about these incredible mentors and how you learn from them and how it shaped you? I haven't had that, uh, the word individual yet, as Miss Watson taught you about the individual. I was listening to Condoleezza Rice on a mm -hmm. podcast not too long ago and, and she taught her her father was a football coach and she talked about the importance of people knowing their identity and as you said that individuality i just thought that's that same thing like knowing that and then uh just being surrounded by others that have just like helped shaped you and and, and you know it's amazing how many people shape us and, and how many people we're shaping do you have a, I, I'm just curious, do you have a mentorship program in your organization or any type of formal program, or do you just encourage that? Um, so we do, uh, we do, especially for new hires, right, that join the organization, because we want to help them get settled. But also we pair up, you know, leaders um, with other, you know, individuals to help them grow. So those that are, you know, to help build that pipeline right to help people find you know kind of navigate and find mm. their niche and then we also um, pair up with organizations externally to also find you know mentors I try to mentor as much as possible um, but understanding I'm just one person so I I do educate and teach others how to mentor I believe in each one teach one so if I'm showing you and I'm mentoring you the expectation is that you find someone and you mentor them and that's, you know, and you have that domino effect where then we can all be impactful. 
I knew this was going to be an impactful conversation today. I have <laughs> chills as you're sitting here. I'm like, oh man, she is just right on target. Hey, let me ask you this. Was there a moment in your career where you just said, I found my lane? Like I, I just love what I do. Was there a moment or have there been moments? I'm just curious. There have been moments because, um, you know, you have to, it's almost like reinventing yourself, mm -hmm. right? So that you don't get stagnant. And if I hit a point to where I feel, you know, I don't know that there's more that I can contribute here. Instead of, you know, resting on that, I look at what can I do differently? How can I be more impactful? And I go through that, but I, I evaluate myself every year. So I, so I go through that process every year to say, okay, what's working, what's not working, what can I do different, what can I do better, and then how can I help, so who can I help next, and so I'm very intentional about that, and that allows me to then say, you know what, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And part of that is helping others, um, you know, the give back. I'm very intentional about mentoring. I'm very intentional about reaching uh, back to pull others along and sharing my journey. Um, I think the biggest part is the vulnerability and transparency that you have to be so that others know that it has not all been easy. I've made some mistakes, learn from my mistakes, but you have to put in the work. And when you do that, um, that's what I found has been very helpful. And so when I hit that point, um, I would say uh, actually prior to Blockbuster, I hit that point. Um, and I said, you know, I'm not sure if this is what I wanna continue to do. And then at Blockbuster, I hit my stride again. I said, you know what? I, th this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And at the, of course, we know Blockbuster is no longer here. So at that transition, I was thinking, what do I want to do next, right? I, I want to be impactful. So I was open to doing something different. And, um, and I joined Access. And Access was a, you know, smaller organization. I was employee number 15. So really helping them put some things in place. Now we are a global um, organization with offices, you know, four or five offices across the globe and, you know, well, well over five to 700, I think it's 700 um, employees um, globally that we've added, but being able to do that, I see the impact. And now that I'm traveling more internationally, um, especially, you know, as the pandemic is, you know, the restrictions have lifted, I see that I'm doing exactly, I'm where I'm supposed to be because as I'm engaging and interacting with others, I can share my journey, you know, and I can share best practices. This is, you know, this is what's worked for us. This is what's worked for me. Here's how I help. But I can also connect them with others that are doing some things that I've learned from to help them so that they understand they're not in it by themselves. We're in this together and this is how we build and grow together. I, uh, I love everything you've shared. And, you know, the, the one word I just now wrote down was intentionality. And I think that's a big word. Uh, you also share some other words that I think a lot of people struggle with. And one of those is vulnerability. And that is really, man, when you get to that point, you, have, you can really move. You can move a lot of people when you can enter that vulnerability zone. We've heard Brene Brown talk about that in, in all of her books yeah. and all the stuff she's doing. But I want to I want to talk about this intentionality about helping others. Like that's a like that's a big sentence you said earlier. Like I'm here to I'm here to help others, and I'm going to be intentional about doing that. And one of the reasons why, why I got you on the show today was because. I, I see you out there on social. Like we haven't seen each other personally in, in a while, but I see you on social. And every time I see things, it's helping others. And, and, and one of the things that really caught my attention, I was like, man, I had Melody on my list. I got to get her on now because she shared something. And so you shared a um, something on LinkedIn. You had attended a, a women's business summit and you had shared five tips to help others. So of course I clicked that link because I'm I want to know like what is what's the melody share because I want to be helped, and uh, and then of course I shared that as well because just like you said each one teach one, and mm -hmm. so I was like okay I, I'm going to share that too. Oh I would love for you to talk a little bit about this for the audience today a little bit about and I'm just going to say 
uh, just real quick, uh, the, in the article, I'll post that in, in the, in the show notes, but, uh, you were talked about be true to yourself through shift, find and respect commonalities with different people, establish empowering relationships, be a mentor that leads by example. We talked about mentorship and you make the shift. Don't let the shift make you. I, I would love for you to talk about e each one of those and kind of like what you shared and, and what that, like, how's that helped you? And, and did you see it help others when you were sharing? Absolutely. Um, so interesting enough, I actually um, had someone reach out to me and ask me to speak at an event at a conference for them because someone actually um, was on the, you know, on the Zoom. So they attended that um, conference, the women's conference and heard me speak. And so they referred me to speak uh, for that, so that organization. So, um, you know, that's an example of people sharing. So I thought that was very interesting. Uh, but, you know, when, when you think of the, you know, tip one was be true to yourself through the shift. So understanding that, you know, you go, the shift happens and the shift happens regardless if you are prepared or not. And that shift is the change that you need to make. So for a lot of people, um, the shift was the pandemic, right? Um, transitioning from in-person to then working virtually, working remote. And then how do you leverage that? How do you still, how are you still productive, et cetera? And so the, the shift that I referenced was relocating from Arkansas to Dallas. Um, when, I, when I relocated from um, Little Rock, Arkansas to Dallas, Texas, it was an opportunity for me to start over. I didn't have a network here. Um, you know, I didn't, it, it was the early days of LinkedIn. And so at that point, LinkedIn was by invitation. So someone had to share the link with you to even um, join LinkedIn. So it was the early days of that. But, you know, you could meet with people. Uh, this is when people would post networking events in the newspaper, <laughs> if that tells you. Well, the newspaper? What the newspaper, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, so being able to do that, um, you know, that, that shift is now how do you engage with people virtually, mm. right? How, mm. are, how are you navigating that? So that was a shift that mm. I had to make. Um, one of the things that I've done is I embrace those shifts. Mm. Um, you know, change can be, change can cause all kinds of anxiety and frustration, uh, but I embrace it because I know I'll be better for it uh, in the long run. And so I was able to, you know, shift my thinking from transitioning from Arkansas to Texas. Um, and then going from, I worked in health and human services. So I was in a government um, sector transitioning back into the corporate world. So I embraced all of those things at one time from a shift perspective. It's interesting you, you share that. Of course, you know, when you're talking relocation, you're talking my language, Melody. <laughs> I know, uh, but, you know, whenever I think about that, I remember early in my career, I didn't really understand uh, the, my, my purpose when I was helping, uh, I was just, I thought about moving boxes. I didn't mm -hmm. think about moving lives. And, and when I really got my mindset, right, that, that mm -hmm. shifted for me. And then all of a sudden I immersed myself into relocation like no other. Cause I thought, wow, every time someone relocates, well, you got an incredible opportunity to help them. And you just described like what you go through. And so it's not easy. So I appreciate you sharing that. Classy Pierre was uh, the uh, VP of HR was on the show recently. And she talked about moving from when Katrina happened and moving mm. to Dallas, how, how that her shift happened and how hard it was yeah. to meet people. And mm -hmm. so you're, you're right on. What about some of these yeah. other things? So um, some of the other things that, you know, that I talked about was finding and respecting commonalities with different people. Yeah. That's that inclusiveness, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's embracing diversity. Yeah. That's, and that is not just color. It's not just race. It's not mm -hmm. just gender. It, geographically, right? There's a commonality somewhere, whether there's a commonality of food, right? Whether there's a commonality of work, a commonality, there is something that you can find. It could be family oriented. It could be, you know, if they have kids. So you try to find a, you know, commonality with people to connect and build from that. Um, understanding that everyone is stressed. Everyone has adversity. It's, it's how do you leverage that? And how do you push through it and you build that bridge of respect. And so that's, um, you know, that's a, an area of focus that 
uh, it's really, you know, where we all can work towards and do better. Uh, but that is something that I'm very intentional about. And then establishing empowering relationships. You know, you don't want to be have relationships where you're the taker. Mm. You know, you're the taker or you're the giver. When you're only the giver or you're only the taker, it's one sided. But having those empowering relationships where, um, as I expect from my circle, when I'm mentoring, I expect them to find someone to mentor, to share, right? That's, that's that empowerment that you can do it. I'm encouraging you to go beyond what you may be used to. Um, show that, you know, that when you reach out to people, you're being intentional about how we can grow together, help each other. And, and that's something that virtually, um, I think is very important because it's so easy to just send a LinkedIn connection um, for people and say, you know, let's connect. Uh, and, and that's as far as it goes. But how can you really build from that and, you know, and, and not waste it, you know, because when, when you say, okay, let's connect and then it's always a sales pitch, hmm. then that, you know, you can, you can, that can turn someone off. So you don't want that. You want to say, okay, how can we you know, how can we share best practices? How can we learn from each other? How can I share with my network? And yeah. so being intentional. And so I'm all about encouraging people um, to really get involved and to really connect from that perspective. Yeah, I um, love how then, you shared that because I, I was uh, doing a presentation. And I asked the audience, I said, how many of you have people on your LinkedIn uh, that you don't even know who they are? And everybody's hand goes up because yeah. people... Uh, people like to be connected, but yet they don't invest time to build in that relationship because what's that? That takes time. It mm -hmm. takes time to it do does. that. It also mm -hmm. takes having, like you said, you talked about having empathy and investing, like what, learning from that other person. There's just so much more. So, man, I am so glad you, uh, and by the way, when you get that sales pitch, you can often see that coming. You're like, you can. I don't know if I should connect. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and connect. And then all of a sudden, boom, there's a sales pitch and you're right. That yes. is a big, it's just a big turn off. And so, uh, yeah, no, that, that is so good. Okay. Uh, what, what's, what's next? Be a mentor that leads by example. It's, it's easy to say you're a mentor and not do anything. Right. But how are you really inspiring and motivating people? Mm -hmm. um, there are people that you may influence or may see you as a mentor that you may never have a conversation with. Right. Um, you know, a lot of times people say, well, that's an, you know, that's just influence. Um, but some people consider that mentoring. And so when you uh, when you're mentoring, whether that's mentoring people on your team, mentoring, uh, you know, internally, externally of your organization, it's about being intentional. Mm -hmm. Right. It's about leading by example. Show them how to mentor. When you mentor someone, they should be inspired to mentor someone else. They should be inspired. So that's that pulling people along. That's bringing others around. That's when you bring someone into the room, you know, we talk about, oh, there's not enough seats at the table, but there's enough room. So uh -huh. if you bring someone into the room, how are you leading by example to show them what to do once they're in there? So it's helping them navigate. And so that's, um, that's leading by example, because not everyone understands um, that whole mentor, mentee, you know, who, what's, what's this person's role? So you really have to teach them. And, and, and one of the ways you can do it is just by, it doesn't even have to be formal, right? Informal. No. You can show someone how to greet someone or how to connect with someone, how to properly introduce someone. Mm -hmm. There's just so many different ways uh, to mentor. And so, no, that is, that is so good. I love that. Absolutely love it. Absolutely. And then the uh, last one, what's the, 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 uh, the last the tip you had on there? You make the shift. Don't let the shift make you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Tell us about that. You know, the shift is happening. Okay. The shift is change, right? Yeah. Change is the only thing that's guaranteed. That's the only thing that's guaranteed. Yeah. So either you shift with it or it's going to shift without you. So yeah. you make the shift. Don't let the shift make you. That means embrace the change. Embrace it. Okay, you're scared of it. That's okay. Embrace it. Do it in fear. Do it. You can you can be nervous, but still do it. Keep moving. Don't stop. And don't let change or the fear of change 
thoughts make you stop in your tracks to do nothing because you're going to be left behind. And so that you make the shift, don't let the shift make you, that's you taking control. That's you being in, in the driving seat of your destiny and what you want to do and how you want to do it. This has been so good. I, again, I'm gonna put the link uh, in the show notes so people can access that article. Hey, I wanna ask you a, a question before we uh, go to the next part. And, and that is one of the things I talk about in, in, in my book, is creating a five-star experience. Like whenever you go to a restaurant, you give someone a five-star review, like that mm -hmm. must have been a good experience, right? Maybe it was the way yeah. or the food or the venue, whatever that was. But I talk about how we can all give five-star experiences in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And and I'm just wondering, like, as I talk, and I didn't give you this question, but I, <laughs> I'm just wondering uh, if you would comment on like, how do you see yourself like giving five-star experiences in the, in the workplace. Uh, and one of the things I shared with someone the other day was starting and ending a meeting on time sometimes is a five-star <laughs> experience, right? Any thoughts yeah. around like, because there's so many tips here, any thoughts around, and, and this has been absolutely incredible. I love getting a five-star experience on a podcast, but uh, in the workplace, any thoughts around how you personally give your team or people that come into your path, yeah, a five-star experience. Like when they walk away, they go give you five stars. Any thoughts around that? Absolutely. Um, so I really aspire to create a delightful experience at every interaction with anyone. And I teach my team that. So whether that's an email, whether that's a phone call, whether that's in person, I want to make sure it's a delightful experience. So when we talk about concierge, we take a concierge approach to our people. We, we make sure that our people feel like we're giving them more than what they're getting uh, giving to us. And so we want to make sure we're going above and beyond to think through things. And you know, be excited about it. I'm excited to help. I'm excited. I want you to walk away saying, yes, I'm confident that she'll be able to help me. I'm confident that whatever it is, um, even if it's, I'll look into it, that, you know, they understand it will be done. It will be taken care of. You know, we're, we're in this together. That's that partnership and collaboration. And so that's, um, that's a saying that I have on my team. Make sure that you are creating a delightful experience at every interaction for, um, for our people. And so, you know, when I'm engaging with people um, in the office, the, you know, you, you start with saying hi, you know, speak. And so, I, you know, I make sure you make eye contact when you see people. Hi, how are you? If it's someone that you don't know, then you should know their name by the time you walk off from them. If it's a new employee, if it's a visitor, um, we want to make sure that we are delighting um, and that they feel part of the Access family when they're, you know, within the organization or not. Um, that's that's what I strive to do every day. Okay, write that word down. Delightful. Now that is a five star experience. That is so great. I just like I just felt that uh, that experience, and, and not not just you giving that experience, but you helping your team uh, give that to others. That is oh my gosh, that is so good. I love that. I knew this was going to be good. Hey, I want to uh, I want to ask you one more question. Then we're going to go to the last five minutes, which it's, it's time to accelerate, but. The question I want to ask you, Melody, is any advice you were given, like when you were early in your career, maybe growing up, but early in your career or late career that you just find yourself often sharing with others? It was just so good. Any thoughts around that? Um, absolutely. One, uh, some advice that I received was failure is not a person. Failure is a moment. And that advice really helped because, you know, when you, when you fail at something, you think, oh man, you know, mm. you know, I didn't, I didn't succeed, you know, that a mistake, whatever it is, but that's a moment that does not define who you are. And so when um, the advice, when I realized that failure is not melody, failure is not my name, then I was able to approach it and also help others understand, okay, you will make a misstep. You will make mistakes. We're human. It's about how you rebound from that. So let's, so let's bounce back. Let's get in there and let's do it. Let's change it. 
you know, it's not over. It's not the end of the world. You're not the first to fail. You're not the only person to fail and you're not the last person to fail. And so success is really a combination of keeping, keep moving, right? Mm. It's, a, it's a combination of failures that, that they did not succeed to. They did not stop. They kept on until they were actually successful at something. Same thing, same approach. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm motivated. <laughs> that is so good. I love that. Failure is, is not a person. It's a moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Write that down. That is so, so good. I love that advice. And I know that you sharing that advice is probably going to help someone right now who's going through a failure moment, right? Yeah. Thinking and it might have been them, but it was only that moment. And so uh, I appreciate you sharing that. That that means so much. Hey, let's shift over to it's time to accelerate. We're going to spend the last couple of minutes on a few fun questions. And the first question I always like to ask is, would you rather read a book or listen to a podcast? I know you're doing a lot of traveling. I'm curious. Um, listen to a podcast, Ooh. but I do love books. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me like there's not one or the other it's both any uh any podcasts in particular or, or books that you have, have read or listened to lately that are stand out so i've been catching up on your podcast so i would say that definitely yours top um you know in, in my top line of podcasts um, i love it and i love then, it i'll tell uh, you later <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and the book that um that i've been reading is dare to lead Ooh, ooh. okay ooh. i'm just going to say something about dare to lead we read that in our in our climb group a while back and Brene brown says something in there that i often share with people and that is this she says when people ask you what your values are right we have a lot of different values to to make our decisions every day she said you should know your top two just snapping your fingers. And so yeah. I love everything about that book. I'll put that book in the, in, the, in the show notes as well. Hey, let me ask you this question. Other than all the great work you're doing, what energizes you each day? Um, what energizes me each day is, um, is, is really matcha, matcha powder, green tea matcha powder. If you have not tried it, it is the best. Um, I live for it. It's, it's my, I don't need five hour energy drinks, but matcha is the best. That is what energizes me. If I'm having a, a, a low moment, I can drink some matcha tea and I am good. I am, <laughs> that's what energizes me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first for the, okay. How do you spell that? I want to make sure I got that M right. M-A-T-C-H-A. -A. That's matcha. what I thought. Matcha, matcha powder. powder get yourself <laughs> oh my gosh you know i'm going to be doing that and i'm going to be letting you know what that matcha is all about that is so i can't I'm in, wait i'm energized from you just like sharing that with me that is so fantastic <laughs> okay so here's the last question melody 10 years older is around the corner knocking at your door and mm -hmm. you're going to get up and go answer that door what's she going to say to you she's going to say keep going girl we still got work to do don't stop. I love that. We still got work to do. I heard Tim Tebow one time talk about our most important work is always ahead of us. Yeah. And I just, I love that when he said that. Melody, you are definitely uh, living life in the leadership lane. I appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, for those who maybe they heard some of the tips you shared earlier or, or something and they want to connect, how, how is the best way for them to connect with you? They can connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, Melody Linux. Uh, I'm on all social media platforms. Uh, Instagram may give you a, a little taste of love, um, but uh, Instagram, every platform is Melody Linux. And by the way, if you're, you connect with her on, on LinkedIn, be sure and put a note in that connection. That sure helps, doesn't it? Yes, it does help. Let me know that you listen to the podcast. So that's a, that's a commonality. Um, you know, I know, I know Bruce is doing some amazing things and you need to, if this is your first one, go back and listen to some others. I've been so inspired by the leaders that he um, really takes the moments to discuss and share some tips. So um, that's been very helpful. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm truly grateful for the opportunity to sit down with you. 
uh, because it's been so long. But thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, same goes for uh, me, too. I just appreciate you coming on the show, sharing perspective and wisdom. And I, I appreciate your friendship so much. And I can't wait to share this episode. Oh, I can't wait. I'm excited. It's going to be phenomenal. I am so excited. Awesome. Hey, I'll talk to you later. Thanks again. Okay. Appreciate you, Melody. Thanks, Ruth. Take care.